Leaving Giant's Causeway, we drove inland just two miles to the village of Bushmills, which would serve as our home base for the next three days and two nights. How did we choose Bushmills? Chris and I both grew up in small towns and wanted to get a sense of community and check out Northern Ireland's village life. At home, we'd made a list of things we wanted to see and visit in Northern Ireland. This included Downhill Domain, the Moosenden Temple, Dunluce Castle, Giant's Causeway, Carrickareed Rope Bridge, and the Dark Hedges. Using the village of Bushmills as a home base left us 10 to 25 minutes from each of these locations. Located on the Bush River, the town was originally called Port Cayman, but was renamed in the mid-1800s when there were seven different mills on the Bush and three more on the St. Columns Rill, a tributary of it. It's also known for Old Bush Mills Distillery, the oldest licensed whiskey distillery in the world, distilling since 1608. We had a bit of trouble finding our accommodation. We were staying at the old corn mill in the kiln wing, but we couldn't get Wi-Fi to check our reservation for the address, and somehow the hard copy didn't make it into the paper file we had. Oops, my bad. But Bushmills is a small town and we knew we could see the river and the mill wheel from our place. We wandered around, finding the wrong mill first, but eventually ending up on the other side or the town side of the river to where we should be. Now Chris remembered that we were on Bridge Street and when we crossed the bridge, sure enough, we found the right place. The Kiln Wing of Palmer's Mill is a historic property managed by the Irish Land Trust, which can be rented for two or more nights. We'll give you a peek, but this property was so unique, we're doing a whole video just on the Kiln Wing and the Irish Land Trust, so you too can stay in an old lighthouse, mill, schoolhouse, tower, or other historic property for a reasonable cost. Be sure to watch for our upcoming video to find out how. It was charming and cozy, and the view from the living room window was amazing. We headed out to get acquainted with Bushmills. We have to stay to the left, coming right out of our gate. Kind of a blind curve here on the left. That goes downtown. This goes up, and it's a blind curve here, too, because of the hill. So it was a little tough for Chris to get in and out of our gate. It was a tight turn. Bush Mills is a charming village, known as a conservation village because it has over 90 listed buildings of historic significance, the highest of any town or village in the Northeast. Here on Main Street, you'll see Bushmills Inn, a hotel, restaurant, and bar with a beautiful patio section. Just down the block was the co-op where we bought groceries. You have to have a membership to shop there, but they'll gladly sell you one. And it's an interesting experience. On the street behind the co-op was the Visitor Information Center for Bushmills, where we met a charming woman who told us not to be offended by the colorful language that was common in the area. We took no offense. And just down the street, we found our first pub in town, Bush House. Packed with locals and a few visitors, it was a perfect introduction to village life. We found a table in the cozy back room and proceeded to get to know people. If you're wondering about the lack of live footage in the pubs, we decided that shooting video in small town places was in most cases too intrusive. Unlike the tourist bars in Galway, where our server was used to taking it in stride, these were just village gathering spots, more personal and intimate. We put the camera away and spent time getting to know the people instead. Oh look, it's Finn McCool's, and we've heard of Finn before. 
So Chris will pick up the story where we left off at Giant's Causeway. When we left off, Finn McCool was running as fast as he could, minus one boot, to reach his home in Kildare. The giant Scott, Ben and Donner, was closing on McCool. Finn reached his home and told his wife, Una, what was up. Una came up with a brilliant idea to save him. She gathered old bedclothes and other rags to create giant-sized baby clothes. She told Finn to put the costume on and follow her. Near the fire was a large cradle that Finn was to curl up in when Ben and Donner arrived. The Scot reached Finn's house and banged on the door. Una calmly opened the door and said Finn was off hunting deer. Ben and Donner wasn't really convinced. He searched the house and finally came to the cradle near the fireplace. He was shocked when he saw the size of the baby of Finn McCool. If that is the baby, how big must Finn be? Ben and Donner hustled back to Scotland, tearing up the newly built causeway. If you've heard other versions of this story about Finn, we'd love to hear about them in comments. We had planned on going to Old Bushmills Distillery, but when we tried to get tickets online, we discovered that they weren't doing tours on weekends. That seemed odd to us. But a lot of the people we talked to around town, all knew or related to someone who worked there, said they had been short-staffed and tours had been open limited hours since the pandemic. We see from the website that they're open regular hours now and full-time. The people we were talking to suggested we head over to Bushmills Inn, where we could do a tasting. The inn had a gorgeous patio, and inside the restaurant had a very old-time vibe including a gas-lit bar. We sipped the Black Bush, the 10-year single malt, and the 12-year single malt. They got progressively smoother and more complex with each one. But our favorite tasting was at Finn McCool's with our newfound friends. Bring me water. <laughs> We had to be up early the next morning to film the dark hedges before it got crowded, so we needed coffee. We stopped at Lorna's, and I'm not sure they were actually open yet, but the cook served me coffee and scones to go while Chris waited in the car. She was even kind enough to help me out to the car since I was carrying two cups of coffee and a bag of scones, and they were delicious. Because we had cooking facilities at the cottage, breakfast was the meal we ate out most. Our last morning in Bushmills, we stopped at Mike's Coffee Shop for their famed Ulster Fry. The difference is, Ulster Fry comes with potato farls and fried soda bread, in addition to the usual full Irish breakfast. As you can see, we made quick work of this tasty food. You were hungry too. <laughs> Although there are open borders between Ireland and Northern Ireland, you can't miss the fact that you're part of Great Britain up here. From the Royal Mail to banners of Queen Elizabeth, to the Union Jack flying at half staff, as Queen Elizabeth had just recently passed away. The townspeople had encouraged us to come out and see the small parade in memory of Queen Elizabeth, who had dedicated their war memorial in the early 2000s. The Protestant boys groups from both Bushmills and Giant's Causeway laid flowers at the foot of the memorial. But our time in the quaint village of Bushmills was coming to a close. The beautiful scenery and warm people make it an unforgettable place. We would like to thank Terry, Tommy, and Frank and all the wonderful people we met in Bushmills for making us feel so welcome during our stay there.
This one's for you. Cheers. Cheers. And stay tuned next week when we take you to the dark hedges.